the U.S. military faces a dilemma. For decades, it has projected power in the Pacific using carrier strike groups and air bases in Japan, South Korea, and Guam. After this combination of naval and air power forced the Chinese into ceasefires during the Second and Third Taiwan Strait Crisis, the People's Liberation Army has spent close to 30 years developing weaponry which can hold these assets at risk at the outbreak of war. In a rush to counter this strategy of area denial, the U.S. military is testing and developing new techniques, which will allow it to continue fighting after receiving the opening salvos of the world's largest missile arsenal. This is the story of how a new class of UAV will be key to this new strategy. This is the XQ-58 Valkyrie, a stealthy unmanned combat aerial vehicle being tested by the US Air Force, Marine Corps, and Navy. It has a range of 2,000 nautical miles, with its internal payload bay allowing it to fit a variety of weapons or sensors. It can be launched from virtually anywhere using small rocket boosters to catapult it into the air before deploying a parachute to be retrieved. It is this versatility which will be key to fighting in the contested Pacific. In a major move away from a few large and distant bases which would be under constant fire as soon as hostilities begin, the United States Marine Corps is moving towards a new way of warfighting. One where Marines would operate from a larger number of small concealed bases well within range of enemy weapons. A concept they call Expeditionary Advanced Base Operations, EABO. In these forward bases, ground-based anti-ship missiles like the Naval Strike Missile can be quickly moved in to complicate the movement of enemy maritime forces. F-35Bs and anti-submarine warfare helicopters can be refueled and rearmed using improvised runways, and unmanned aerial vehicles like the Valkyrie can be launched by rocket boosters to assist the F-35 on its mission. So, what capabilities does a low-cost drone like the Valkyrie offer the $90 million F-35? In this simulation, we find ourselves in a high-intensity conflict where major U.S. airbases and radar installations have been suppressed by crews and ballistic weapon strikes. U.S. carriers and their airborne warning aircraft are ordered to remain outside of the engagement zone until enemy surveillance capabilities are degraded. The U.S. Marine Corps does, however, maintain its expeditionary advanced air bases on minor Japanese islands. And in one of these islands, a group of F-35B fighters departs their improvised runway and moves to intercept a hostile aerial tanker detected by another expeditionary base. As they bring the enemy well within range, they fire two AMRAAM air-to-air missiles which climb high into the thin air of the upper atmosphere where aerodynamic drag is weak. Descending at a speed of Mach 2, they connect with the tanker, scoring a kill. Unbeknown to the F-35s, a hostile air patrol en route to the tanker is in the blind zone of their front-facing radar. The heat signature of the missiles and the jet exhaust have been detected by the hostile J-16s using their infrared search equipment, and a close-range engagement begins. With the F-35s finding themselves in a worst-case engagement with a more heavily armed and maneuverable enemy, the simulation is marked as a failure. With the U.S. Navy's sophisticated network of reconnaissance and surveillance aircraft unable to operate this close to enemy lines, the F-35 found itself with poor situational awareness, relying on just its front-facing radar and electronic emission sensors to plot a safe intercept to the tanker. In this second scenario, four Valkyrie UAVs equipped with miniature ASA radars are launched from concealed locations across the Ryukyu Islands. As they communicate with one another and with the F-35s, they quickly put together a detailed picture of the hostile forces across the East China Sea. Using this data, the F-35s plot an intercept which avoids the enemy J-16s. After eliminating the tanker, both the F-35s and the Valkyries continue to adjust their routes, aiming to return to base without further engagements. With the hostile air patrol turning westwards, away from the concealed air bases, the Valkyries also begin returning to base. Each returns individually, with one keeping watch as the other deploys its parachute and descends back to Earth. From here, they are relocated and refueled, ready for their next mission. Comparing the two simulations, we can see how a network of low-cost drones can act as a force multiplier for F-35s operating from forward bases. They can be launched and retrieved from concealed locations, fly deeper within the enemy's engagement zone than traditional surveillance assets, and can be fitted with a number of loadouts. While we examined how the Valkyrie would operate if equipped with radar, 
electronic warfare, infrared sensing, and even air-to-air -air loadouts are being explored. Let me know if you would like to see how these would operate, or if you would like to learn more about the Marine Corps' new way of fighting. In the meantime, stay safe.